that's the price of diesel today in Canada. Dollar 17.9 per liter. Pretty expensive, but we have high fuel tax and sales tax that we can claim. So if you take that into account, it's not too expensive. And I'm at the Flying J truck stop at the border. And there's my truck over there parked next to uh, a red pita build. And over here, we have Queen Elizabeth Way also known as QEW. This is exit five. So US border is this way to my left, five kilometers or three miles. Like the way that truck is going, Kriska. And then you hit uh, Peace Bridge, pay the toll. And on the other side, it's uh, Buffalo, and by toll I mean there's um, 10 bucks, what is it, 10.75 US if you don't have a transponder in your truck, so you gotta pay. I don't think cars, uh, car drivers uh, pay here. Yeah, you pay on the way back. So we're shooting with the EN Sports Pro. Mounted on top of my spacesuit. And we're using an external mic, which for some reason does not produce the sound with the same quality as on my Panasonic. When I plug this in, And I just wanted you to see this wild uh, vegetation over here. So we're just checking how the camera handles the color. Later on I might uh, get my Nikon and do some photo shoot around here. That's the beauty with these uh, simple cams that even though they give you a limited you know, features, but it's still 1080p or 7, 720p, whatever you choose. Or like on mine, there's a switch in the back. And you don't have to worry about focusing, exposure, shutter speed, aperture. Sometimes it's a, it's a relief, you know, after a, like a DSLR camera where you have to do everything. Uh, you have to think through everything unless you're using an auto mode. So let's go check out my uh, load, shall we? And what I'm calling today is a CAT 320BL320. So of course these numbers uh, mean approximately that it's a 20 ton machine, according to the Ritchie Brothers uh, website. The uh, operating weight is about 42,000 pounds, so which is close to 20 tons. So it's about 10 six wide, 10 feet six inches. So I didn't have to use uh, outrigger boards. And most guys would just uh, get away with uh, four, four chains plus one on the bucket. I don't know. I'm gonna, you know, I always want to have some something spare, so. So I put two in the front, two in the two in the back, just to see like this, like a regular, regular, regular way most guys do, right? And then I just added another pair in the middle, so just to be uh, to be safe. And here's a chain on the on the boom, and I like how you know this. Uh, uh, timber fits nicely over there. See, it's not touching the cylinder. Uh, it just fits between these uh, between these two lips, you know. 
<laughs> so I've been using it all the time like this. I would just because uh, first few trips I was not sure how to uh, position the timber. Now it works perfect like this. And you might notice that over here I got my uh, outrigger. That's the frame. There's a cross member right here, and you can see it over here. And that's why I put this thing right here where, where my cross member is. It's underneath there. So I find it's always a good idea to, because this is heavy, right? First of all, the weight is heavy of the whole boom, but plus you push it down with some pressure. So it's always best to, you know, put it as close as possible to your cross member and then use, a, use some good wood. And loading was not difficult because this machine is pretty nimble. It's a 1999 machine. And I picked this up uh, near Peterborough, Ontario. And you would never guess where it's going. It's going to Africa. <laughs> Africa. Turns out... Uh, what? Local tribes like these uh, pre-emissions pre-computer machines like this one has no no ECM nothing so but inside it's pretty oh wow even has a cup holder <laughs> yeah the windshield is cracked and uh, that's one thing that also I learned that you know when dealing with something like this you have to write it down uh, the shipper said, oh, the buyer knows this. He was here last month, but, you know, I just took cover my ass. Uh, I wrote it down, cracked windshield, and there's a couple of scratches in the back. But you see, it's very easy. Like, this one controls the, the bucket, right? And the, and the top, top stick. This one controls the, the lower stick, and it turns, turns the, the machine. And you gotta push this down like this in order for these uh, controls to be to be working. Oh, wow, there's even a radio here with a stereo cassette. Stereo cassette. You guys remember those? <laughs> if you go to Amazon or Amazon.ca, I think there would have to be a special order if you ask them to supply music on uh, stereo cassettes. So that's how old this machine is. Uh, well, it has a sunroof over here. And this whole thing, I, I think it opens. I guess, you know, in Africa. I guess that's why they don't care, because you don't actually need the windshield in Africa, right? And then some windshield wipers here. That's your ignition. And even the key is different. You know, I have the generic cat key, which is supposed to... Wait a second. This is not a cat key. Oh yeah, he used someone else's uh, someone else's key, I guess. But um, oh, and this one has um, a rebuilt um, engine, and the shipper said they they rebuilt the undercarriage. So I guess that's why somebody would be interested in such an old machine. But again. This is cool for people with uh, resources, with uh, cheap labor available, because with no ECM, you can rebuild this thing forever, right? You don't need any codes from a dealer, nothing, you know? And so, yeah, I dropped the... Uh, broke the trailer disconnected and the shipper drove it on I like drove it towards the trailer and then I took over because it was a bit scary when the machine was bouncing on the on the ramps but all in all uh, easy easy to load the uh, load and uh, because of the small bucket small boom I'm only like 12 feet tall so 90,000 pounds, gross. And that's my weight loaded. 10.6 wide. 
and everything else is legal. Height legal, length legal. Now I'm just waiting for, uh, I'm just waiting for my paperwork because uh, they need a dock receipt so that this can be accepted at the port. And we don't have that yet, so. I just had some quick lunch at the Denny's here. Now what is this? I don't remember this. It's probably something in uh, dripping from hydraulics or something. Yeah, I didn't have this stuff before. No, this is just water. Yeah, it, it, uh, it, it was raining on and off on the way here. But that's kind of like greasy, something greasy, something probably uh, leaking somewhere. No, this was not me. It was already here. Actually, I found a, uh, a bird nest. When I uh, loaded, there was a bird nest. Yeah, somewhere here. <laughs> but it was empty. So someone already uh, ate, uh, ate all the eggs. So that's what I'm doing. I have no idea yet what I'm holding back, but now the goal is to get the paperwork, get across the border and get to the get to the port so and there you can see me in the in the in the reflection stay tuned